on this new series that I'm loving so far on this Becoming series. And y'all, we are getting down to the most gritty for Becoming series. This is Danielle J. Martin of Behind the Spotlight Podcast. Now, over the next couple of weeks, I'm inviting you to tune into a couple of conversations that I'll be having with some of my close friends who are also true believers and community influencers. I will ask him for something. He will give it to me, but it's not how I thought it would look. Mm. Just because you think that you deserve something does not mean that you deserve it in that season. The skills that you have that nobody else has, your perspective, the lens that you have, those things are your best thing. People always say like, when you know better, you do better. But why is it that when you know better, you still don't do better? Are you really becoming wiser? Now on this new series called Becoming, we're gonna be diving into a variety of topics that's going to empower you and inspire you to become the better version of yourself. That's what it is. Cause it's you're stepping into the unknown. You're stepping into unfamiliar territory. So when you're growing and when you're evolving and when you're changing, you're gonna be faced with things that you've never been faced with. What God is calling you to do doesn't make sense, it makes miracles. That you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Now, if you find that this conversation is serving you, then I encourage you to share it with someone else. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Now open up your minds and be ready to be transformed. Hey guys, it's Danielle J. Martin back with another episode on the Behind the Spotlight podcast on this Becoming series. And y'all, we are getting down to the most gritty for Becoming series. This is episode eight, 10 part series that I want to invite my special friends, special guests, people that just mean so much to me. And y'all, chains I already know are being broken, are still in the process of being broken. I'm super excited for this episode, we are talking about old self versus new self. Okay. And bringing in my spiritual sister. All right. We go way back, way back. I mean, really kind of just like a couple of years, it seems like (laughs) we go say way back, (laughs) way back, way back. But, um, she is a business owner and entrepreneur of an event space called Velour Venue. Let me introduce you to my girl, Sheree Crump. (laughs) Hello. Hello. How are you doing, sister? I'm good. I'm doing very good. How are you? I'm doing amazing. I'm super excited about this. And (laughs) to get us going, girl, I already know we have so much to talk about. But one thing I always like to kind of like introduce is really like why I bring specific people to the show. right? Right. And like the purpose of our connection and why I think that you could also help any listener or viewer that's out there right now. And Mm -hmm. so a little bit about me and Ray, we go back to college, Sam Houston state university. Uh, Let's just be real. In the beginning, we didn't like each other. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was like a very interesting interaction. Right. And for no reason, like it was like, I would say probably the rumors. I mean, what would you say? Um, it it was a lot. (laughs) It was a lot. It was, um, lies. It was a lot of lies. I'll say that. It was a lot of lies. Yeah. So it made me, yeah, not like. (laughs) (laughs) And look at us now. Look at us now. Yeah. Fast forward. Um, we end up joining a book club together and we, um, some of the girls that I came into contact with, well, what you guys heard from Lexi. And so, um, she started this book club with relationship goals from Mike Todd. When his book came out, um, I said, Hey, you should do a book club. There's a lot of women that are kind of going through a lot of similarities and relationships. This would be a great season for us to come together and read the book. And something told me to just invite Ray at the time I was like, okay, yeah. Didn't even really like, you know, we were cordial, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because the people we were kind of having the same circle of friends mm-hmm. and the people we were around at this time, we were like hanging out and stuff, going to different, you know, events together. And so something was just like, let me not say something, the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's yeah. the real thing. Right. The Holy Spirit y'all. 
said, <laughs> invite her to the book club. So yeah. I invite her to the book club. We start to realize we had a lot of similarities, um, not only in relationships, but just family, our personal background, the way we grew up together was yeah. so similar. I was like staring at myself. It was a little yeah. scary. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what's your point of view on it? Of like how we came together. It's crazy how yeah. we're just so alike. <laughs> yeah. Um, mine's it's just, you can't deny that it was God bringing us together, especially for the fact that we did not like each other in the beginning, you know? So I never thought I would be friends with you. I didn't like this person, but, you know, over the years and like when things settled down and separated and all of that, um, I used to see you on Instagram. So I would follow you on social media and I would see like the type of things that you would post and I would see like your relationship with God. So I seen your light and that's what drew me to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I felt like my spirit was kind of connected to your spirit in a sense. So just to see how it all came together, us, you invited me to do the book club because mm -hmm. I felt like we were going to be friends. Like once I started, you did seeing, say that. <laughs> yeah, it really did. Cause like once I started seeing who you were, like outside of that whole situation, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And getting to know, I mean, I still didn't know you, know you, but right. just from how you presented yourself and some of the stuff that you used to share, like I seen the, the authenticity in you, you know, mm -hmm. I see your spirit. And so that's what, you know, attracted me or drew me towards you. And so I felt like we was going to be friends, but then it was all in God's time. And so I wasn't finna mm -hmm. just like, Hey, like, come be my friend. Like, I wasn't going to do that, but it was all in God's timing. And I see how he even, like you said, the spirit, Holy Spirit told you to invite me to this book club. Mm -hmm. And in that season, it was in a season where I was feeling like, like I was in that season of shifting, you know, and I, I wasn't, um, I guess connecting with previous friendships I had the same way. And I felt like God was, you know, just drawing me to a different level. And so when you invited me, because I felt lonely in that season, you know, and but so when you invited me to do the book club, I was like, OK, God, you know, I see you. And so just being surrounded with all those women that, you know, is on that same page and on the same path, like it was good. So very thankful for our friendship. I love our friendship. Like when I yes. say like spiritual relationships, spiritual friendships, sister in Christ. Like you guys will hear me say that a lot about a lot of people, but I mean, it's serious because when you talk about that season where you felt lonely and you felt like, you know, you were searching for something, we were literally in a very similar season. Yeah. And around that time I was praying for stronger friendships. I was praying for right. the right friendships and right. literally like me and Lexi only met. Well, we haven't really met in person, but we knew each other by being colleagues in the same, um, news industry, entertainment industry. And so, you know, she brought a group of girls or a group of women around and we didn't know either of them either. You know what I mean? Right. And it was a beautiful thing to see how, um, we all had very, a lot of similarities. And I think right. that during that season, we all gravitated towards each other and it mm -hmm. was so powerful. And I think yeah. outside of that book club, me and Ray really just got really spiritually connected. And so moving forward to like where we are now, when I say that God has his hand on, on this thing, God mm -hmm. literally has his hand on this thing. And so yeah. when I tell you guys that we be <laughs> before this, podcast <laughs> <laughs> we need to start just having a microphone when we talk cause... literally we said that you know that's gonna be coming you know yeah. look to be continued to like be con <laughs> yes the amount of just the power in our conversations like yeah. it's it's crazy so yeah but before we even go anywhere, um, I just want to thank you so much for truly supporting me, Ray. You have no idea just like the support and the love that I feel for you. And yeah. even when like I be talking to you and, you know, you just say, I feel your spirit. I feel like I needed to call you today. Like the other day, yeah. I think that was yesterday, but um, it was just so nice to know that even though we're not in the same state. Mm -hmm. You know, you could just tell, like, let me just check up. Let me see right. if she okay. You know what right. I mean? And it's like, y'all need these friends. You need spiritual yeah. friends that can check up on you. You know what yeah. I mean? The power right. in friendships is necessary. Yes. So definitely do that. But 
what I love about Ray right now, well, I love her in everything, but she is becoming so true and real to where God has called her to be. And she has been chosen for this episode for a specific reason, because she has poured so much light into my life of, um, kind of becoming this, I wouldn't even say like new person, but becoming who God has called her to be versus who she was. And right. so, um, I want you to share with the viewers and the listeners, um, just your path and like where you're going and where you, what you had to leave behind. Let's like, start with that. I know there's a lot to unpack here. Mm-hmm. There is a lot, but like yeah. today, like, where does God have you? Um, so to answer that, like some of the stuff that I had to leave behind was the desire to be in control and also to be comfortable. So those two things went hand in hand because my old self was used to being comfortable, was used to being in control of everything. Because when I'm in control, it's like I feel a sense of peace. Mm-hmm. I feel safety. I feel like I could keep it all together. And so and it brought me, you know, comfort. And so that's the state that I was in. And that's the, the, I guess the level I was operating in. But then once God started calling me higher, it don't work like that. <laughs> so I knew I had to release that, the desire to be in control. And I had to release that control and let him, you know, take the lead of my life. And then also as far as being comfortable, it's like, I always wanted to be comfortable. Any change, I did not like change at all. So anytime God was telling me to change this or to do this, it's like I resisted it. And I I ran from it because I didn't want to feel that discomfort. And so I was used to being comfortable. I was used to playing, staying in that space. But once he started calling me higher, I seen, okay, this is something that I'm going to have to release. And so just some of the things that went hand in hand with that was like certain friendships. I, I started to have to like evaluate my life. And so I had to evaluate the people that was in my life, the relationships I had, I had to evaluate, you know, the environments I was in, just really taking a full scope of what my life was looking like, and why was I in this position, you know, and so once I started seeing that, it was certain friendships that I had that I seen that weren't pouring into me the way I needed to. So it wasn't pushing me towards purpose, it wasn't pushing me towards growth and so once I seen that that's when I knew I had to you know kind of fall back and 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 release those things because it's like when you're used to something and when you're comfortable with it when you're familiar with it it's like it's easy to stay in that position you know it's easy to stay in that friendship it's easy to stay in that relationship it's easy to stay in that environment because you're comfortable with it and you're used to it and that's kind of the space that I was in and but as you know like I said when God started calling me higher it's like I knew I couldn't be in control anymore I knew because it was a lot of stuff I didn't know it's like the fear of the unknown the fear of change the fear is this going to work is it not going to work am I going to have friends am I not going to have friends am I going to have a relationship am I not going to have a relationship and so stepping into a place of unknown and uncertainty was scary for me and that's a lot why I stayed in that position for as long as I did or stayed at that level as long as I did because I didn't want to release that control you know I didn't want to risk the the fact of being uncomfortable like I wanted my comfort so bad I was Mm. I was so addicted to comfort you know, I was addicted yes. to her and having to release that, it brought like a certain anxiety and I didn't want to feel out of control. Mm-hmm. And so, but from that, it's like I knew in order to get to the next level, in order to become this person God's calling me to be, I have to let go. So that definitely went hand in hand with pretty much everything. So relationships, friendships, mindset, um, even like the way I would think, like there was, um, kind of having like that people pleasing mentality I kind of had that people pleasing mentality and always wanted to be accepted you want to fit in you know you want to go with the crowd and do what everyone else is doing because Mm -hmm. you want that love you want that attention you want to feel like you belong to a certain place and so that's how I felt but I seen the discontent that I felt you know like in my spirit and so that's when just the mindset, like all of that stuff just had to shift. All of that stuff had to change. And even how I 
thought about myself, even how I view things. So it all started with my mindset, you know, and, and the mind is just so powerful. The mind is so powerful. <laughs> There's one like, more time. The mind the is mind so is powerful. Powerful. And and once I got a hold of that and understanding that, that it was all about your thoughts and it's about what you think about and it's how you view life. And once I got a hold of that and um began to really just start monitoring and becoming aware of the, the type of thoughts that I was having, then that's when I began to see how negative it was and how out of alignment it was with God. So yeah, it started with my mind, definitely. Well, first of all, right, you said a lot. I had to start writing things down because one thing about it is like when we start talking, I'm like, oh, I gotta write that down. I gotta write that down. So you just said a lot of things like uncomfort, like being uncomfortable, right? right. And being stuck in comfort. And you talk mm -hmm. about control, wanting to be so in control of like mm -hmm. where God is trying to take you. And that's one thing that like I had to learn too of where he's calling me. And even just the surroundings, like when someone tells you about yourself, mm -hmm. that is the most uncomfortable thing. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Definitely. And so like hearing recently that like I have this like stronghold of wanting to be in control, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're trying to see like the destiny that God has for you, you're like, where am I trying to go? Where do you have me? And like Ray knows I was like in this whirlwind in this like whole, I felt as if like, I couldn't see or understand what God was saying because I wanted to know, we yeah. want to know so bad. Yeah. And, um, so that was just so powerful. And then e even talking about the unknown, right. That just goes back mm -hmm. to, you know, being un um, uncomfortable and being trying, trying to be in control. Then you right. talk about being uncertain and then also mm -hmm. like your mindset. So those key words all go together and, all I heard was the lack of faith. Right. Mm, and absolutely. literally when I was listening to a sermon recently the other day, and it made me wonder, like, do we really even have the faith that we say that we have when right. we are trying to be in control, when we're trying to understand where God is trying to call us and we don't see it at all. And right. it's like, do you really trust him? It's like, you right. really have to ask yourself, do I really trust God, because right. I'm like feeling all these emotions and I'm not reminded of his word of what I'm feeling, you know? Right. And it's like, right. do you really have the faith of a mustard seed to know that wherever I take you, like, I'm not going to harm you. I'm really exactly. not. Exactly. So I just think that's so beautiful. Like, the realness. And that's one thing I want you guys to understand is like just being so transparent, like the stories that you're going to continue to hear is like personal stories that I know can resonate with you, you know, right. and I really want you to understand that one, you're not alone. And then to learn from this story. And if you see yourself in this story, figure out like, okay, how did Ray get there? And maybe like, what do I need to do for myself to get to this better space? Right. Right. So going right. back to that key word, the one thing that we love mindset, what is your mindset? You know, what yeah. is your mindset going into the next season that God has for you? You know what I mean? And I yeah. think, you know, you were telling me that like you had to ask God for a different mindset for going into your singleness. Right. Oh, and it's like talking about that, like there's a lot of single people out here. You know what I yeah. mean? And even before I got into a relationship, I was like oh my God, dreading this. Like, I'm going to be alone. I'm yeah. not going to have anything to do. Like, let's just be real. That is real. Yeah. But what for you, how did you change your mindset of thinking like, this is a peaceful place? Yeah. So kind of like you were saying beforehand, I had that type of negative perspective towards singleness. Cause I, I well, let me run it back. So I always was in a relationship. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't in a relationship, I was either talking to someone, I was entertaining someone, it was always somebody in the picture. So I never had a season of it just, still. yeah, mm -hmm. just me. It was literally always somebody in the picture. And so that was pretty much my entire life. Like I could think maybe since middle school, it was like that. So it's like, I'm 28 now, going to be 29. And just having that 
repetitive cycle of always just having somebody there. So I became accustomed to that. I became comfortable with that. And I was, you know, that was my norm. Always having somebody and being in a relationship was normal for me. Mm -hmm. So when God started calling me to a season of singleness and I felt it in my spirit and I felt, you know, the discontentment, I felt like, you know, I need to go through this season, not only just to experience singleness but so I can heal so I can find who I am so I could grow closer to God and but the way I would look at it singleness was terrible like I felt like I was going to be lonely I looked at it like dang like I'm going to be single forever I'm going to be 50 years old before I get married have some kids (laughs) you know what I'm saying like you'll start thinking like that because it's like got to release that comfort you know Mm -hmm. you got to release that control and for the longest I was the one in control of that like that's the one area that I struggled with the most I hated being single (laughs) yeah like everything else you know it was okay but this this was like my weak area Mm -hmm. and so when God was calling me to that season um that's why I really didn't step into that season because of how I was viewing it Mm -hmm. you know I viewed it it viewed it in such a negative perspective and I viewed it as if it was like a dreadful sentence that I have to go through and I'm not going to have nobody I'm not going to have my person I'm not going to have nobody to talk to or have that companionship somebody to hang out with so the way I viewed it was just very lonely you know Mm -hmm. and I dreaded it and I did not want to step into that because like I said I've never Mm -hmm. been in that season before Mm -hmm. and so I remember I think me and you were having a conversation one day And you was telling me to like, to pray, to get more specific with my prayers and to pray and ask God to change my perspective on singleness. And so at the time I was like, okay, that, you know, that ain't, you know, I need something that's going to, you know, really help me. But that's the very thing that helped me. And I started to pray that prayer, like, God, please change my perspective on how I'm viewing singleness, how I'm viewing the seat. And so I remember a time um me and and the person I was with at the time we had we got into it about something I forgot but we ended up breaking up and I remember I started praying and asking God like what is it and then I started talking to myself as well I was like what is it you know what is keeping you here what why are you afraid to be single why are you afraid to step into this season and so when once I started like talking out loud and really asking myself those questions, then I, it's like kind of like the veil started to be, to come off my eyes. And I began to see like, it's you, like I'm holding myself back of how I'm viewing this thing. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, that's when like the shift of my, my whole perspective just changed. And before it's like I was viewing it as a death sentence kind of and I was viewing it as just this dreadful lonely season it's going to be long and you know I'm never going to have nobody or it's just going to take forever for me to have somebody so why not just keep what I have now you know but then it's like I once my perspective changed I started to see this as an opportunity you know I, I started to see it as abundant like I get to spend time with God I get to discover who I am I don't have to worry about another person you know I really get to pour into myself like no other time and the thing is it's like once I get married because I started thinking to myself like once I get married I'm about to be married for the rest of my life you know what I'm saying (laughs) girl all the time yeah like I'm gonna be married for the rest of my life but this season of singleness that's a precious time so why Mm -hmm. not honor it why not get the most out of it and there's only certain things that can come from this season Mm -hmm. that I may not be able to get if I'm in a relationship or I may not be able to get if I'm in a marriage so now the view of how I view it is like I love it you know Mm -hmm. I love it and I'm able to pour into myself I'm able it's like so much stuff that I found out about myself because I'm time now Mm -hmm. you know I'm actually watering this relationship with myself and back like I was watering the relationship with the person I was in. I was so focused on them. I was so focused on friends and family that I didn't have time to focus on myself. And right. so singleness this season, that's what it's, you know, been bringing for me. And it's been good. It's been really good, girl. Wow. So Ray, you just dropped a lot. Like literally, I love <laughs> it so much that like, I know that this is helping 
someone, at least one person out there. But one thing that you said that I was like, okay, let me write this down but like uh-huh. verbatim because I was like, she's going to love this. So when you said that you were holding yourself, like you're, it was like, you were saying that it was me. I was holding myself back. Right. Uh-huh. And then, um, you talked about healing, right. Uh-huh. Holding yourself back, healing, um, uh-huh. you know, you weren't healed yet. And so, um, and then you also said opportunity. So I literally uh-huh. said, I'm wondering, I'm like, dang, how many people are disobeying a season because they're not ready for it because they haven't learned to change their perspective. Like yes. literally I'm like, Absolutely. wow. Like how many people are doing that? Right. Yeah. And then I had to think to myself about a time that I was disobeying a season because I wasn't ready. And it's right. like instead, like, like you said, it goes back to your mindset. If you're telling yourself all these negative things, like, oh my gosh, it's going to be like this. And I'm never going to meet anybody like girl, if you're telling yourself, you're never going to meet anybody. You might not because of what you're thinking. Yeah, exactly. Right? And exactly. so, and I said this the other day, cause I was like helping one of my friends because she was saying this and I literally said, um, and it's crazy because be careful what you ask for, but <laughs> I literally <laughs> said, and I remember telling you after my last relationship, I kept saying, I said, you know what, Ray, I'm done doing this dating thing. I'm like, this is for the birds. Like I'm over it. I'm like, I know I'm a wife before I'm be already becoming one. Mm-hmm. And so I said, I said, my next boyfriend is going to be my husband. I literally right. said that over and over and over to where I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't even probably pray for when I wanted it to happen, but I just kept saying like, I already know the next person I date is going to be my husband. Like, it's just going right. to be, I'm like, I'm done doing this. Like I'm tired of wasting time with people. Like I'm just ready to like be with my husband, you know, whoever right. that is. And I was very specific in prayer of who I wanted and things like that. But mm-hmm. as far as like, you know, if you're telling yourself what you want, like what she put out is definitely what you get in. And as cliche as that is, like, it is so real, you know what I mean? Right. And like really changing your, your perspective and asking and praying God, like, Hey, can you help me look at a different way of mm-hmm. where you're calling me? You know what yeah. I mean? Because right now I only see the surface level right now. Right. I only see that this of where you have me, this job, this friendship, this relationship, I only see it at its physical form. I don't see where you're trying to take me. I don't see what am I supposed to learn here? What do you want me to get from this? Like we have to start literally asking different questions of like, why do you want me here? What do you want me to learn here about this season? You know, I'm really just talking to myself right now because (laughs) I'm like, dang, like, what do you want me to learn in this season? Why yeah. don't you want me to move yet? Why do you want me to stay? You know, like right. really just asking different questions, but like yeah. a really key thing that I love that you said is healing, healing mm-hmm. and holding yourself back. What if where you get your healing is letting go of something? That's, that's your healing, exactly. letting exactly. go old self versus new self, right? Yeah. In order for you to go forward, you have to let go. Yeah. And of what, like, what, what is God asking you to let go of? I don't know, but like, ask yourself, like, right. what are you letting go of? Right. I remember it, telling, it, go ahead um, real quick. But even with that, like when you do ask, you have to be open to that answer too. Mm. So you have to be open to what God says. Cause a lot of times it's like, we can want what we want so bad to where it's like, we feel like that's what God, it, it, unless we hear that, you know, unless we get that confirmation that, you know, God is saying the same thing, because God could be telling you something different, but because you want what you want so bad, you don't have an ear for it. And so that's that whole thing about releasing control, releasing control in that way as well. We have to release that control of what we want and what we think is the best for us. And, you know, as we think, or it's going to turn out like this, or I have to do this, this, it's like, we have to release control over all of that. Yes. And so, because God does speak, but mm. is are you listening, you know, mm. and you have to have an ear for his voice and whatever that answer is, even if it do, does go against with what you want, are you going to heed to that? Mm. Or are you just going to go with what you want? So I think that's a big thing. And that's something that I definitely have to learn because I was praying the prayers like, God, if this ain't for me, you know, let me know or remove it. Or do this. <laughs> And, and he's still showing you and he still shows me. Yeah. Like it'd be right in my face, but because it was, it, it didn't align with what I wanted. Ooh. Then 
I'm like, okay, God, I, I don't hear God. Mm. <laughs> okay. I don't hear God. I know? literally wrote down manipulation. That's Manipulating it. what you want. Like maybe God is really telling you, he's been telling you this whole time, y'all, what he is calling you to do. And you uh-huh. said, you know, I don't think that's it because it doesn't fit in what I want. Right. Right. But really, until you take the limits off, take off the restrictions, take off the standards, you know, and what that really looks like, does that even align of where God wants you to be? Exactly. That's powerful. Manipulation. And I remember, you know, my uh, sponsor literally just told me the other day, he was Uh like, you really have to stick and uh, and not stick with, but like remind yourself. He was like, you really have to remind yourself of what your purpose is because every opportunity that's going to keep knocking at your door, you can't get overwhelmed and start feeling like you're going in this whirlwind when really you can already knock off the list. Okay. This doesn't align with with where God wants me to be. This is not for me because right. every opportunity for you is going to knock at your door. Like it's this pretty bow, like it's for you. It's great. Mm-hmm. It sounds amazing, but if it doesn't align, then you can't say yes. Right. Yeah. Like if y'all have not by this time, probably have heard the Mike Todd series on mm-hmm. here is holy. And he mm-hmm. was talking about how God told him that this year, I want you to not speak more than five times. What? Yeah. yeah. What? Imagine yeah. when you're at the peak of actually like going of where, like I'm on the peak, I'm here, I'm becoming, I'm this person. And God said, okay, but this year, I don't want you to be on social media right. this year. I don't want you to be in a relationship. And you're like, but I'm healed. God, I'm, I've been single for a year. I've been single for eight months. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And then he said, oh, I told them the call. What? Yeah. Because yeah. every opportunity is a test that yeah, took exactly. me out. I said, okay. Exactly. And that is so countercultural, though, because mm. culture don't, they don't say that culture, not preaching that they not speaking that it's like opportunity. If you got an opportunity, go after go. it. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what opportunity it is. It's like, you have to get every single opportunity that comes your way and the way it operates God's way in the kingdom way. is not like that. You know, and that's why I say you have to develop that ear for his voice and you have or whatever you identify God with, you know, yes. as source. It's like you have to have an ear for that, you know, and you have to be it's, it's whether or not you're going to be obedient to it or you're not, because it's like we want to do it our way. But then it's like we're trying to mix a little bit of God, but then a little bit of our way and then try to make it do what it do. But, you know, it's either you choosing your way or you choosing God's way. And so it's whatever you're going to heed to. And I think also too, like one of the things that he was saying was, cause I was about to write it down thing. I forgot. Um, it's coming back <laughs> to me. It's on the way. Holy spirit. Okay. Um, dang, I forgot, but it's going to come back. Okay. Yeah. Cause he, you were talking about how, um, what did he say? And I'm just like, dang, this is the here is holy. Yeah. The here is holy. And he was talking about the limits and how every time, to- every opportunity is not for you. And, oh, that's what he was saying. Thank you. He was saying, um, that everything that you were called to do is not going to make, um, culture sense. It's going to make heaven sense, like pretty mm-hmm. much around those areas right. about like, you know, what God is calling you to do. Does it make sense? It makes miracles. That's what he said. And I was like, right. yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. What is it? What if God is calling you somewhere that does not make any sense at all, but it does make sense it does make miracles, you know? And, um, I think that's a very hard space to be in. And so I also want to even like give the viewers and listeners advice of like, you know, what if God is calling you to a season that where nobody understands, but you hear it, like, what is that like? You know? Yeah. And a lot of it, the whole, this self journey, this growth, you know, seeking purpose, all of that, that's what it is. Because as you're stepping into the unknown, you're stepping into unfamiliar territory. So when you're growing and when you're evolving and when you're changing, you're going to be faced with things that you've never been faced with. You know, you're going to be in rooms you've never been in rooms before. You're, you're, it's, it's all going to be new. And so the thing that helps me is my relationship with God. I know I keep saying that, but it really is just it my is. relationship. 
God. And again, like whatever you identify God as that source um, is just my relationship with him. And that's what gives me the confidence to move the way I move. So to when I'm stepping into something that I've never been been before, I'm not trusting myself. You know, I'm trusting God. And I'm, that's the whole thing of stepping out in faith. And it's like, we all say we have faith, but then do you, you know, you, you could tell if a person has faith based on their actions and based how they move. Yeah. And so something that definitely helps me is my faith in God and me trusting him to lead me step by step. So for example, one of the things I would say the, probably the biggest, one of the biggest things that I had to face with was when I started my business. Mm. Right. So I was, you know, an employee for all my life, you know, had my jobs and stuff like that. So me expecting to get a paycheck every two weeks, I'm cool, you know, and it and it's a it's a place that you can rest in. It's a place of certainty because you know the money's coming in it's and stable. So, stable. Yeah, you have the stability, the comfort, I mean everything. So I was good, you know. But once God again started calling me higher and he's putting these new desires in my heart because I never thought you know I was going to be a business owner or anything like that but it's when my faith started growing and so when my faith started growing in him and I really started developing that relationship with him then he put those desires in my heart to want more and so once I started seeking out for the business this is new territory for me you know what I'm saying? I've never been a business owner. I ain't got the business education. You know, I'm not qualified for this. I, it just, I had every single reason of why I couldn't do it. But the more, like I said, the relationship I had with God and the more he poured into me and he started showing me who I am in him. And so that's what gave me the courage. That's what gave me the confidence to set, step out. And also before, another thing was, I was the type I had to know everything before I moved. So I have to know what I'm getting into. I got to know what it looked like. I got to know how this is going to play out. Like that control thing, again, it's like I had to be in control. I had to know what I'm stepping into, what I'm getting into. But once I seen I can't do that and it didn't look like that, that's when I knew I had to release control. So I literally, with everything in me, was just relying on God Mm. fully. So the things that I knew at the time, it was like some information and some things that I knew, but it wasn't like the whole picture, but with what I knew and what I had at the time was enough. He told me it was enough. Just make a step, make that move. And so, okay, I make the step. And then from that, then it's like, literally when it says he'll lead your guide, you footstep by footstep, like he'll lead you. And so every time I step, he'll reveal something else. And then he'll reveal something else. So it's, all in that process but what I understood is like I had to be in movement Mm. and a lot of times it's like beforehand I would not move at all until I have all the answers you know so the whole process of faith is like what you have right now like Pastor Mike always say it all you have is all you need all you need (laughs) all you have and so when we really understand that and we really grasp that mentality like okay I have enough. I am enough. You know, I can do this. So what, what I have right now, that's all I need to do. I don't know. I don't have to know this whole 500 fortune company, how this is going to work, this and that. No, all I got to do is just make this one step right here, you know, and that starts that process. And then before you know it, you will have that, you know? So we are very similar on just like knowing all the answers, right? Like, and I still have this, um, thing with myself where I am still in that way. I'm going to be so honest. Like that's why it's probably hard for me to know what is next because it's like, I need to know the answers. Like, I think I told my friend the other day, I was like, I just wish if you just gave me a glimpse, just like a (laughs) sneak peek, you know what I mean? Like, can I just peek a little bit, you know? And so what she said to me was, well, remember the times you thought this before and um, look at where you are now. Like, do you trust it? And I'm like, so I had to remind myself that even all the times where I didn't understand, like, you know, he said, let go of this friendship, let go of this relationship, let go of this career, or it's time for you to move. Even when I didn't see it, I was thinking all these things. And I had to remind myself, like, 
you know, going back to that season of singleness, like even when I was so afraid and I said, you know what, I'm taking my hand off. And it's crazy because God really knows when you really are taking your hand off of things. Mm-hmm. You can say it. You can be like, okay, it's <laughs> let go. Let God, yeah. you got it. You got but it. You- Hold yeah, it. you still <laughs> hold it on. You still hold it on to that yes. teddy bear that we right. talked about. He, you're still holding on to that small teddy bear when really behind his back, he got something so big for you. So like when we talk about that, like I'm still in that way. And he knows I'm like, God, please work on my heart. Please work right. on my faith because I know my faith is weak in that area of like wanting to see what's next and, and the yeah. eager. And it's because I blame it on the culture that we live in of just like, you see things on social media, you get overwhelmed, you know, you start to feel like, dang, like, where am I? You know, all these different yeah. things. So just knowing all the answers, but when I reminded myself of how, you know, he did it before, right. he's going to do it again. And just right. reminding yourself really like he did do it before. Why would you not think that he's not going to do it again? And I think it's just because it's, um, the growing pains. I think it's mm-hmm. really the growing pains of like reminding yourself of, of, um, your faith, reminding yourself of what, what he did before reminding yourself that like, you know, it's going to be okay. Like I really, I don't know about you, Ray, but I really have to tell myself like, Danielle, it's Mm -hmm. going to be okay. (laughs) You know, like it's so real, like talking to yourself, Mm y'all, I be talking to myself all the time, but Mm -hmm. I really have to tell myself like, it is going whoever you are, it is going to be okay. And like those words right there are somewhat a piece that comes over you, you know, right. because when you start thinking about everything, like all the things, and what about this? And I don't have any money. And I, when you talk about your business, right. I remember you told, told me that testimony story mm-hmm. about how, when you were like praying for a certain season and you were just like, you went full-time entrepreneurship and he showed up. And he yeah. gave you that payment, yeah. right? And even right. when he, and, and um, you know, one time when you had someone that tried to like take something from you, but then he just doubled down and said, you know yeah. what? It's yours. Cause you weren't yeah. even worried about it. Exactly. And so the, the reality of it is, cause we're not saying, and I'm not saying you're, you're just going to be, have this fiery faith all the time. Right. Like, no. are you, you know, so I still, till this day, with all the knowledge and the wisdom I understand and all of that, still to this day, I'll have my moments of doubt. You know, I have yeah. I have my moments. So just like that testimony that you brought up, it was a season where I started feeling the doubts. I was feeling the pressure. I was feeling yeah. like all these negative emotions and feeling like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this and just all of that. And from that, there was a season where I went through where I started experiencing that doubt. I started experiencing lack and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this and that. And so I told God, I need you to show up for me in a way that's going to, you know, to mm-hmm. where I know you're real, to where I know you're with me, to know, to where I know you got me. And so that whole season, um, like I said, I surrendered and I just started I got back on track you know I started Mm -hmm. spending more time with God and just really pouring more into my spirit again um when I prayed that prayer and I told him I was like I need you to show me you and I need to know your me so it was uh with Pastor Mike because he does the crazy faith um what's it called the um the crazy faith oh yeah the crazy faith offering yeah yeah so the crazy at the end of the year right so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And at the time, I only had twenty dollars in my account. So I was like, hey, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna be obedient to it. And so mm-hmm. I remember the last thing that I had put on uh, my crazy faith card. I said, this uh, twenty dollars is going to turn into five thousand dollars by the beginning of next year, or I said by the end of this year. And I left it alone. So I was doing what I had to do. And I was just trusting God to do what he had to do. And I kid you not, by the end of that year, literally that $20 turned into $5,000. And at first it was like 4,200. It was something like that. And I was like, okay, you know, it's close enough. Right. But no, cause I got like two more incomes came in 
And then when I tallied up everything and I seen it was 5,000. I will spell out. No, for real. I like. Spell out. I lost it. And I was like, okay. Wow. God, you got me. You know, it's like, I know you and I know you're here. And from that point, Mm -hmm. so it's like, whatever I do go through, even seasons of discomfort or things that I'm familiar with, it's like, I know I'm not alone in it. You know, that's why I move the way I move. That's why I could believe the way I believe. And you can see me like things. It's like, you should be like scared of, or you should be struggling with, or you should not have faith for these type of things where people won't understand. But knowing that I'm not trusting in myself, you know, it's like, I'm trusting Mm -hmm. in God. And so that's what really helps me to move and navigate and do what I do, what I do. So, and so there's so many times, Ray, that as you're talking, like you're literally saying, holding like anytime you held on to something mm-hmm. anytime you released something those are the two words that i'm getting right now holding right. on to something and mm-hmm. releasing something letting mm-hmm. go of something so really like what is god telling you to let go of what mm-hmm. mindset is he trying to tell you like hey you need to let go you mm-hmm. need to let go right now like, what is it? You know what I mean? And so it's just crazy because like, you know, we keep telling ourselves that we have this faith, that we have this and we have that and we trust God and you trust, you know, whatever and whoever you believe in, but it's just like, what are you holding on to? What mindset? Again, your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. What you tell yourself every single day. If you tell yourself that I'm ugly or I don't look pretty today, or, you know, I can't see myself with so-and-so or whatever the case may be, like, I don't see myself at this job, but that's where God is calling you. I don't see myself in this state. I never saw myself in Topeka, Kansas and look at your girl now. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's just like really telling yourself and releasing, Hey, you know what? I'm giving it to you. My hand is off of it. And I know we talked about this earlier. We said like, God really knows your heart of when you're really trying to let go of something. And like you say that you're not worried about it or, you know, but he knows your hand, your finger, you still trying to drive the steering wheel from the passenger seat. Like girl, sit over there. Like just sit, relax. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And even with that though, the thing is, cause God knows each of us, Mm -hmm. right? And God knows where each of us is at. So he not going to ask me to go Mm. ask for a million dollar loan or or just something just so extravagant. If he know my level of faith is right here. Come on. So he knows where you're at. And and that's, um, that's something just so good about God. It's like, he knows the details. He knows the fear you have. He knows what's blocking you from even believing him. And so he'll meet you exactly where you're at. And that's what he did for me. And so and just like how you were talking about earlier, you wish that God would just tell you, okay, what is it that I'm supposed to do? And just giving it to us, boom, like that. Mm-hmm. But even in that, he knows he can't do that. And it's, you have to develop into that mm-hmm. because say he told you, you were going to be this multi-million dollar person. You've got all these companies, you're going to be famous, you're going to be dead. Mm-hmm. And you're working at, you know, McDonald's right now, or you're a janitor right now. So if he were to tell you that, would you really believe him? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like he he the, he develops you into that. So the same thing with faith. It's like it's a development even in that. So it, it could start with something small. It's like, okay, I have the faith to do this. And it's something small. And But once you see him come through with that, right. it's like your faith will start to grow. So it's all in that upward process. You know, it's so all. Good. And we, like I said, a lot of times we just want, what we want when we want it and we think we know better and we think we can handle it but then just like if you were a parent and you have kids you're not going to give your and I think Preston Mike has said this too he was saying like he's not going to give his car keys to his daughter mm-hmm. when she's six years old you know That's she can want perfect. Car, yeah like she can That's want a perfect the car, example uh, say daddy I could drive I could do it you know mm-hmm. you know I'm gonna be good I'm you know but he knows that she's not capable to drive a heavy machinery like that. She's mm-hmm. not able to drive that car. So it's the same thing with God. God knows us. God knows where we're at. And then even if you think about relationships, he knows who you need to be connected to, who you don't mm-hmm. need to be connected to, because he right. sees everything. Yes. And so 
And it's like, when you really trust God, you can rest because you know, okay, if this, say if it's something that you did want and that you did want to hold on to, but he's telling you to let go, you may not want to, but then it's like, you know, at the end of it all is for a reason. And he knows what that reason is. And it's like, Mm. you could trust that. So. Wow. I love that. And that just, that kind of reminds me of like, you know, everything happens for a reason. Right. And it's like, you think that you're prepared for something that you're not really prepared for. And so like, that's really what I received from it was just like, you know, would you really allow your kids to drive your car when they're like two years old? Would you really allow your kids to drive your car when they're four or five, all the way up till 10? And you think that they're smart, but you know, they're not ready. And it's Mm -hmm. like, why would you think that God can give you something that he knows that you're not ready for? you know, right. and he knows that you're still in this mindset. He knows you're, he's working on you in this season. He's working on your heart. He's working on you. Um, letting go of the hurt and the pain. We just talked about on the phone earlier, you know, when someone is still stuck in their trauma, when someone that can't operate out of love because, or a- operate out of a certain mindset, because right. they only see their view and they're still holding on to something. It's like, yeah. you know, you still, are wanting and you're praying for something you're like why can I have this why 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 and it's like but going back to did you do the thing that God told you to do in the last season did you go and forgive that person did you go and say you know I'm sorry and own up to what you know that you did but you're still expecting someone to apologize to you you know whoever that is for is like you need to go and apologize you need to go say whatever your piece to someone else because you think that it's you or you think it's not you, but it is you. You know yeah. what I mean? When was the last time that you turned the mirror on yourself? When was the last time you said, you know what? I haven't been obedient. I haven't been nice. I haven't been caring and cherishing in this season. I need to check my heart, you know? Right. And I think that's the, the thing that we don't do enough mm-hmm. is we don't check our heart. Yeah, We don't that's- check ourself. You know, you want to receive all this love from someone, but you don't love yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to say, you know what I deserve. I, 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 but it's like, when was the last time that you gave? When was the last time that you healed? And so all I can think of is, you know, why is it so important to let go of mm-hmm. something that God has been telling you to let go of in order for you to receive. I think a lot of people think, and I used to be in this season, yeah. I used to think that I can, I can receive a gift from God, even though I haven't let go of what he told me to do. You know what I mean? And it's like, why do you think like, okay, for people who are hoarders out there, you need to clean out your closet, clean it <laughs> out. You know what I mean? Clean oh. it out. I'm talking to myself because I'm looking at my closet and I'm like, girl, clean it out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Mm -hmm. so it just makes me think that like, why do you think talking to myself? Okay. Why do you think that God should give you any more gifts, any more shoes in your closet, any more clothes? Why do you think that you should give any, you should receive anything else when you haven't cleaned it out? When you haven't cleaned out your car, why do you expect to drive a Lamborghini when you can't take care of your sedan? You know what I mean? And so Mike talks about that all the time. That is like, we think that we should, I deserve this. Why Mm -hmm. do you think that you deserve that? Mm -hmm. You know? So going back to the question, right. Of like, literally, why is it so important for us. Cause I, and I want to explain my story, but after, but like, why do you think it's so important to let go of what God is trying to tell you to let go of? So you can receive, like he wants you to receive something, but you don't have room for it. You don't have a a big enough blessing right now to receive in this season because you are holding on to so much junk. Yeah. That is, it's like, it's rottening your soul. Yeah. And like you said, um, so letting go, it's, it's like a requirement. It's like a prerequisite for the next level. It's like, you have to let go. And the way I view it is, is like weights. So Mm -hmm. it's like, if you're holding on to all this stuff, it's God, if God is telling you to let something go, but you don't want to, because you don't understand, you don't see how this is going to play out. You don't see why you have to let it go and you hold on to it. That becomes a weight for you. 
you know, and it's like, God can be trying to take you to this next level. And even I'm speaking for myself, because this was, was my story. It's like, God, I felt God calling me to a, another level. I felt mm-hmm. him calling me higher, but it's like, it was certain things I didn't want to let go. And I wanted to take everything with me to that next level. But when God calls you, he's calling you. He ain't calling you and your mama and your best friend and your, and your cousin and your uh, boyfriend. He's calling you. you. And the, the thing, I had that mentality where it's like, I thought when he's calling me, he's calling all of us, you know? And so it's like, I wanted to hold on to everything I had. Um, but going back to what I was saying, it's like, in order to, if you don't let go, you won't be able to go to that next level. And it's, it's certain things that just can't go to that next level. And again, it's like a weight. It's like, you're trying to, to carry 500 pounds up this, this staircase, you know, but it's too heavy. It's too heavy. And so the whole letting go process, and it's just part of the process. Like you have to let, let certain things go because it, the things that you're holding on to the type of relationships you have, friendships or environments, even mindset. Mm. mindset is for sure one so the type yeah. the way you think the way you perceive the way you look at things it could work for this level here mm-hmm. but the next level you can't think the way you're thinking right now you can't you know respond and have that clack back so quick you can't do that on that next level mm-hmm. you can't have these type of friendships or relationships that's not going to be pushing you or adding value to you or adding you know pushing you towards your purpose or pushing you towards growth so everything connected is for a reason and Mm -hmm. so when you really start to become self-aware and when you really start to examine your life you'll see the things that don't fit in in alignment with where God is taking you Mm -hmm. and so no matter how much we want it no matter how much we want to keep it it's like if God tells you to let go of something trust him and it's for a reason and it's always at the end of the day it's so you can become who you're supposed to become and it's so that you can you know, fulfill that destiny that he has for you. So at the end of the day, it's always for you. And a lot of times, like I said, we can get caught up on just the things and always just trying to hold on so tight, but not understanding the reasoning behind it. So, and sometimes we won't understand until we get to that, the next level or further down the line, we won't understand. But when you look back, you can see, oh, okay, that's why this couldn't go with me. So <laughs> that's, that's good that is so good. girl look the part of running your own production y'all I gotta get up get down everything but you know what it's gonna be quality video because I know how to run my own show by myself so anyways um yeah all these different <laughs> angles y'all get in if you're watching for those listening just go check out the YouTube video but like for real I love doing what I do but anyways I like to just get the different angles yeah. so um but I think that's really important how you were just talking about like you said letting go is a requirement and it yeah. is and and I think like I think back to the time when I was in this season I remember calling Ray and I just said you know what Ray I said I'm fed up with myself And I said, Mm -hmm. I am done because I said, I literally feel like I cannot grow. Like, I mean, trying to literally, um, do things on your own. Cause that's, that's another thing that we do, you know, Mm -hmm. as as believers, we Mm -hmm. think that like, you know what, you know, God is not working up there. Don't worry, God, I got you. I'm gonna work (laughs) for you. (laughs) And then we start working and doing things out of our own favor. Mm-hmm. That only serves us. Right. And I just remember I was really in this season where um, I wanted more of myself. Like I wanted to expand my mind. I wanted to get um, become more knowledgeable. I wanted to just get more involved in the community. And I just didn't know where to start. And I just felt like there was a cap on myself. Like I felt so capped. Like I'm like, I know I can do more. And it's like, why can I not? do more, you know, like what is holding me? And it was the situation I was in at the time where I was just, God said, what did I tell you to do last season? You need to let go. And so literally, um, he told me to like, get out of a relationship. He was like, I need you to be by yourself because in order for you to see something in order for you to receive, you have to let go of this relationship. 
And I said, well, I don't want to let go. I'm not ready (laughs) is what I told him. You know, I literally said, well, that's great. Um, is there any other door that I can go through with what I have for real? That's what I said to him. Yeah. Okay. That's real. (laughs) That's real. And, um, he said, okay, well, try yourself and see Mm -hmm. where you go. Yeah. And I went nowhere. Like you said, you talk about weights and it was like trying to carry the weight. And it wasn't as if the relationship was heavy, but it mm-hmm. was just something that he said, it can't go with you. Right. And it was hard. And I, and I want to talk about, um, letting go of something that really means something a lot to you. And there's, this is not going to be the first time that he's going to like elevate me to a level where it's like, you have to let go of this, right? This right. is not the first time. Okay. Right. So it's kind of just like a prep preparation Mm -hmm. of like, okay, this is a glimpse. And I said, okay, if this is, if this is how hard it is for me to let go of something that I truly care for, I can't even imagine what's coming. You know what I mean? But it also, um, with letting go, I was receiving also a piece of myself. And I Mm. think that was beautiful. I think the beauty of, really becoming is seeing the potential that you have that, you know, when you're with a friendship or a relationship, you may not have the lens to see your capacity with that person. And you may try, you may really try to do it, but it doesn't work. And as much as you try to like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to still do this. I'm still going to, you know, be the best that I can be, but you're still not operating out of your best self because you're still on social media. When you can be working on your craft, you're still watching movies with this person. You're still laying up, you know, you should be writing the book right now, but you're over here watching Netflix. You know what I mean? So those are the things that I'm talking about when you really try to um, do the things yourself. And you say, you know what, I'm going to get up every day at five o'clock in the morning and go to the gym, but you're still sleeping in, you know what I mean? You're still and like, even when you tell this person, Hey, this is what I want to do. I want you to help me. Like, I would love if you motivate me to like get up every morning and you start to rely on them. You Uh start to put the weight on them. You start to put the pressure and say, Hey, I told you I wanted to do this. Why don't you not support me? And then you start blaming the person. Yeah. Right. For the requirement or for the thing that you said that you were going to do. So why are you putting the pressure on them? Exactly. And it's like, you gotta have that that self-awareness so like a lot of us is not aware of us <laughs> and it's like we always pointing the finger at the other person and and things mm-hmm. that we accountable for ourselves like at the end of the day this is your life yeah. you're responsible for you you're responsible for how your life turns out you're it's you got to have that account accountability within yourself and mm-hmm. not put that responsibility on another person and so once you come to that place of self-awareness and just knowing who you are then it's like you're not putting the blame on somebody else if this doesn't happen for me it's because I didn't do this come on you know because I chose this or I allowed this yeah and so we really have to be real with ourselves and face that level of truth within ourselves because a lot of us just you know we just don't have that self-awareness so definitely I love that And I just think it's important to share like personal things because you guys, like, I don't ever want to come on here and be like, I have this, I have this perfect life and I, and I got it all figured out because Mm -hmm. oh, only if you knew, only (laughs) if you knew that your girl is still trying to figure it out. But the beauty of it all is sharing the experiences and letting you know that you are really not alone. Like you're just not like what you think. Cause I think I was in that season. I know for a fact I was in that season where I felt like um, everything that I was doing, like no one understood. And I just felt so like no one else is going through this because Mm -hmm. on social media, it it seems right. Mm -hmm. It seems as if like their life is just everything. And I'm like, how can I get to that caliber in that lifestyle? Well, maybe I have to do this. Right. And then it started to put me in this box of like, you know, I really feel like no one is going through this. And I started to like put this whole bubble of like, it's only just me. 
-hmm. and no one understands, but that is a mindset and it's Mm -hmm. not just you. So Mm -hmm. it's like going back to just reminding yourself that you are going to be okay. You're going to be okay. And whatever you're trying to let go of that you are trying to hold on to, I promise you, honey, man, sir, everyone that what God has for you, what is on the other side of that is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. And you're going to look back and be like, wow, like I would do that again. Maybe I wouldn't do that again, but like, you'll be like, I understand. (laughs) I understand. (laughs) Because it will be worth it. It will be worth it in the end. And I think that, and it goes back to that, why knowing your why. So you gotta, Mm -hmm. you gotta have that vision and you have to know what you're reaching for and that other side and getting to the other side or, you know, getting healed, getting whole, being this woman, being Mm -hmm. confident, you know, just all these things that you Mm -hmm. have for, you have to keep that at the forefront of your mind because you can like, you'll have those moments where doubt will start to creep in. And it's like, the thoughts that comes through our minds, we have to become disciplined of that. Like we mm-hmm. have to discipline thoughts. And that's something that I had to learn and still learning because that's a whole process in itself, but just becoming aware of your thoughts and disciplining your thoughts. So at first it's like every thought that came through my mind, I just let it, you know, it just, mm-hmm. whatever I thought, I meditate on it. I it just get worse and worse and worse and worse. But now it's like, you have to, be aware of what what are the stories that you're telling yourself I think you said it earlier but what are the stories that you're telling yourself are you telling yourself like I'm not capable I can't do this I'm not good enough a person like me you know I'm not qualified to do this and do that Mm -hmm. so it's being aware of that voice and knowing that that voice is not from your spirit Mm -hmm. you know that's a lie and just really being able to identify that okay this is not from God this is a lie and but for me, it's like, at first, like I said, I just, all kinds, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Girl. Like all kinds would come and, and I would take it and accept it as true. But then it's like, once I began to, to find who I was, find who I am in God, find who God is, you know, mm-hmm. that's when I started to see, okay, this ain't from God, you know, so I could like cast that thought down. Okay. So it's like the battlefield is in the mind you know, and it's like, once you can master your mind, and again, it's a process, but once you can really grab a, a hold of like your thoughts, and what's that quote? It's like, um, change your mind and you could change your world mm. or master, master your mind, master your life. So it all starts with the mind. So. Change your mind, change your life. And when you talk mm. about the battlefield, it made me think of the book because what we're also mm. going to do is share resources, but the battlefield of the mind by Joyce Meyer is mm-hmm. the mayor, I believe Joyce Mayer is, mm-hmm. um, a beautiful book. Like it's yeah. a daily devotional that mm-hmm. it is so helpful that if you are literally having trouble with your mind and trying to change it, and maybe you do want to be a better person, but there's like that one thing, because that's another thing too, in the series of becoming, or just in the series of becoming in life, like the, the devil's not going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? Right. Like on every new level, on every new season is a new devil, a new yeah. one, a stronger one that's going to yeah. test you to see, okay, are you really over this? Mm-hmm. Are you really over this relationship? Let me just throw a picture of so-and-so with whoever and see how you feel about it. You know what I mean? Let me yeah. just do this. Let me just show you something else. Let me just pick out your heart to see if you are really over it. Because right in the midst of when you say, I'm over so-and-so I'm over this person. That is when you're going to get a text, a call, a screenshot of something to see, yeah. Hey, are you really over this person? You know what yeah. I mean? <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah. woo, I love this conversation today. Yeah. I think this was it. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I loved everything that we talked about today. Like seriously, we touched on so much, but I also want to leave the listeners and viewers with something with like something they could really take home with this, you know? So in the process of us sharing everything, like personal experiences, we also want you to be, you know, 
um, encouraged to really yeah. like take the steps to do them because we could talk about our experiences, but then you're like, okay, but how do I get there? You know what I mean? And so like, I remember Ray, we were talking about this on the phone earlier when someone is like, so what did you do to get over like so-and-so or like, what are the steps did you take? And I remember someone even asked me like, when was the last straw for you? And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and so I really had to think about it. I'm like, what, what was the steps I took to get there? So like right. for you, Ray, like what steps do you encourage people to um, create for themselves as they're going towards becoming their better version of themselves? Right. Um, so for me, cause it, it's different, you know, for everybody, but the thing that worked for me is again, it's like, once I began letting those things go and really just making room you know, for the new and making room to where I can create and I can hear God's voice. That's when I began to pour into my spirit more and I started to do things that I needed. So uh, for one, it's like definitely creating an environment. I had to create an environment and an atmosphere to where I could grow. Cause it's like, I understood that the environment and the space that I was in, I couldn't grow at the rate that God needed me to. So I started to create that environment in that space. And I did that, you know, by watching sermons. I did that by reading. I read a lot. That really helped for sure. So reading different types of books, like faith-filled books or self-development books, financial books, like I would read, 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 and just acquire all this knowledge and wisdom that I could. Um, and then also listening to podcasts. And also I was getting involved more so step again that goes back to the stepping out of my comfort zone because again like I just I would stay I was cool being in my little corner mm -hmm. <laughs> but but once God like I said was calling me higher I started to step out more and and join things that I particularly wouldn't at first so with my business like I I joined a group of like-minded individuals. So they all have event spaces and I have a mentor. So getting connected with people who are like-minded, even I got into therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I got into like different women's conferences and just really putting myself in exposure to where it can help me grow. So just really, you know, creating that environment and creating that space has definitely helped me and just monitoring the things that I watch or in monitoring the things that I listen to. And then also, um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say, but, but it was pretty much just creating, you know, that environment for me. And then back to mindset, it's like, I started understanding the power of thoughts. Mm. And so once I started yes. becoming aware of what I was thinking about, like I had to ask myself, what am I, or not really ask myself, but just become aware of the things that I was thinking about. And once I seen how negative it was and how, you know, self-defeating it was, I seen that's where the whole thing of it started. And so I really started challenging those thoughts. So if I had a negative thought come up, then I would challenge it with the truth. Like, is this true or not? And once I see that it, it was a lie, then it's like, I challenge it with that truth and I replace it with that truth. And that's an ongoing pro process and just a skill that we all have to, you know, develop and master. And so really just becoming in control of my mind in control yeah. of my thoughts and my emotions, not being led by my emotions, but being led by my spirit. So all is just like surrounding myself with things, with people, with environments right. that were going to pour into me and add value to me. And that was going to push me towards purpose, push me towards growth, push me towards God. So I love it. <laughs> I love it. So a lot of things that you said, and I wrote them down just in case you guys lost them. But, you know, one thing that Ray was talking about a couple of things is like checking your environment. What environment are you in? You know, mm -hmm. being aware if that, if the people that you're around, are they serving you? Are they not serving you? So asking yourself that another thing she mentioned was reading, you know, what type of books are you reading? Are you reading at all? I told you guys all the time. I did not like reading, but your girl loves reading now. Yeah. I love yeah. it. And yeah. it's a requirement that is a, letting go and reading is a requirement. You need to expand your mind. And also she talked about getting into podcasts, right? Like filling your mind with, you know, mindful things, like things that are of good. Um, 
podcast. Really, really, really good. Getting involved in the community. I will definitely say being a testimony of that, like getting involved in the community, I would definitely make that a requirement because when you get involved in the community, whether that's small groups, she also men- mentioned small groups, you really start to see who you are. You start to know, like, do I like this? Do I not like this? So if you are being led or called to getting involved, definitely, definitely do that. And then last but not least, you said like just being mindful of like what you're filling your mind with, right? Your mindset. Because again, if you have like negative things pouring into you, you're going to spill that out. You have to be mindful of what is serving you, what is not serving you. So really ask yourselves that y'all, we went really long than we were supposed to go, but that is just how God works. It is beautiful. And Ray, I love you. And there's no limit on, that's Mm -hmm. why I didn't put no limit on any episode. I was like, you're going to get what you get. And what you're going to get is full of resources, knowledge, perspectives that is going to encourage, empower you to be the better version of the self that you know that you can be and who God is calling you to be. But as we come to a close, I always ask my guests, You know, Mm -hmm. leave something for the viewers at home, leave something for the listeners, whoever's watching, listening. So for you, Ray, what do what what is your last words for the people at home? Um, for me, I would say take the time to get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. That would be like my probably my number one thing is to take the time to get to know yourself and start addressing these things within yourself and go deep within yourself find who you are not just in who you are in a relationship not who you are as a mother as a father as a friend as Mm -hmm. a co-worker you know but who are you by yourself and to find that it's like you got to create that space just for you you know and and pour into yourself so really be intentional with that and intentional with your time with yourself and ask yourself those hard questions go deep you know and if you got to get a therapist I mean I I think therapy is good for everyone but at the same time therapy yeah but um just going and getting to the root of things and addressing these traumas you had, these issues you had, the heartbreak you had, and just really unpacking all of that pain and, and the things. Cause a lot of times I, what I understood is like, we have walls up mm. because of certain pains that we went through. Yeah. So, but like, once you start addressing those pains and healing and getting, peeling back these layers, then it's like, you begin to find who you really are and who you really are is, the powerful version of who you are. You know what I'm saying? It's like Power. the real you is the healed you. Mm. I would definitely say take that time to spend time with yourself and just get to know who you are outside of what you do, outside of who you're connected to, but just who you are because everyone has that power within yeah. them. We look at these celebrities, we look at these influencers and think they have something yeah. that we don't. We all have something within us, but it's just a matter of going within and discovering that power. So unlocking that power. So that would be my final words for sure. I love that. And that's really <laughs> um encouraging to say because when I say that she has me, I remember one conversation you said, Danny, you need to recognize, you know like what you do is not who you are. And I was like, but that's all I know that I do. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but that's just what I know. And so she was like, really take time to understand or identify like, who is God calling you to be? Who are you? But who is Danielle outside of TV? Who is Danielle outside of fitness, outside of this podcast? Like, who are you? And it's like really taking time to identify that really helps because I think that is where you can, the mindfulness comes in and like, you're so not quick to like react to certain things that, you know, shouldn't take energy from you. And so I just think that's super, super important. And a lot of gems were dropped today. Thank you, Ray, for coming. Oh my gosh. It was so good. I, one of my favorite episodes, I mean, all of them are my favorite episodes, but definitely this one. So I encourage you. And just so you know, Ray is located in Houston, Texas. So in case you want to check out her spots and book, she does birthday parties. Look, I'm gonna give you a promo. Okay. So she does. (laughs) 
<laughs> she does birthday parties, baby showers, weddings, churches, events, everything. It's an event space in Houston, Texas. And then let the people know where they can follow you on Instagram. Um, so personal page is Ray underscore number two, authentic. And then my business page, yeah, number two. <laughs> and then my business page is Valor.venue. So that's V-A-L-O-R dot V-E-N-U-E. And y'all, let me tell you, don't sleep on my girl because honey, look, check it out. It's so beautiful. Really, really nice. A lot of creative things that she can do in that space. And she could yeah. do decorating, right? As well. Yeah. So I have yeah. the venue. Um, but I also decorate. So I do have the core packages and stuff. So it's like a one-stop shop. You know, I try to provide and make it affordable, you know, for people. So definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, honey. I appreciate you. you and I support you. And again, um, one thing that we always like to say at the end of every single episode is that this episode is not only for you, but it's for someone else. So we encourage you to share this video, this podcast, wherever, however you're listening to it, definitely share it with one person, get it out there because not only do you need it, but your friends, your family, your cousins, whoever's going through a hard time. If you know that friend that needs to let go of a friendship or a person or something, or maybe yeah. they need to check themselves definitely share it this with them. Knowledge is power, you guys. So we definitely, definitely appreciate you joining us. Return right back here next week. Your girl got more episodes. We are coming down to the wire. I'm so excited, but that's all for the behind the spotlight podcast. We do appreciate you joining us. Have a great day, y'all.